Yes, ma'am. Can we start? Yes, ma'am. Good morning to all our present here. For the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them, said Aristotle. Learning is the process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behaviors, skills, values, attitudes, and preferences. To put few learnings into practice, we write. Writing has become an even more important part of daily life. Digital technologies help connect individuals from across the globe to systems such as email and social media. Even today, we all are connected via online to exchange our views and perceptions. I'm extremely overwhelmed to welcome you all to an international workshop on the topic, Essentials of Academic Writing, organized by the Department of English, Justice Bashar Ahmed Said College for Women, in collaboration with ACES Hong Kong. Learning never exhausts the mind, said Leonardo da Vinci. And we have all gathered here today to learn something new and extend our minds to gather profound knowledge. Let us start the session with prayer. If your day is hemmed in with prayers, it is less likely to come unraveled, said Cynthia Lewis. I now call upon Ms. Tasneem of First MA English to recite few verses from the Holy Quran and to render its translation in English. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Surah Al Fatiha, the opening. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Translation I seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the outcast. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Master of the day of recompense. You alone we worship and you alone we beseech for help. Guide us to the straight path. The path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who have gone astray. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Ms. Tasneem. Small cheer and great welcome makes a merry feast. I now call upon our dear head of the department, Dr. Fatima Banu, to deliver the welcome address. Assalamu alaikum. Barahmatullahi Barakatuhu, meaning may the peace and blessings of Allah be showered on you all. This is an Islamic greeting. A very good morning to you all. It gives uh, ma'am, sorry to interrupt, ma'am, Fatima, ma'am. Yes. I request the audience to mute their audios. Fatima, ma'am, shall we start again? Sorry for the interruption. Sherlyn, please mute your audio. Fatima, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. And a very good morning to one and all present here. I would like to start with this Islamic greeting, which means. 
May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be showered on you all. Am I audible? Ma'am, yours is echoing, ma'am. Now, am I clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you can continue, ma'am. Hello? Ma'am, your audio is clear, ma'am. Ma'am, your Hello? audio is clear. Yes, ma'am, your audio is clear. Ma'am, your audio is clear. Fatima, ma'am, you can continue. Hello, are you able to hear me, Abita? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please continue, ma'am. Once again, I wish you all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, meaning may the peace and blessings of Allah be showered on you all. A very good morning to you all. It's me immense pleasure to accord a warm welcome to our guest, Mrs. Atiya Bansal, Dar of Alif Complementary Educational Services and to Mrs. Sophia Bukhari, lecturer in English at Qatar University, to a virtual visit to Chennai and to the Justice Bashir Ahmed Said College for Women. We thank the Almighty for giving us this wonderful opportunity, even during these difficult times. I also warmly welcome all the student and staff participants this morning. I'm proud to state that our institution formerly known as SIET, has been empowering women through education for more than six decades. More than 30 undergraduate and 10 postgraduate programs are offered in two sessions to a student strength of about 7,000. We also offer five research programs awarding PhD degrees in both arts and science streams. Hence, it is indeed befitting to have this workshop on essentials of academic writing, which is a very important skill to develop. We are indeed fortunate to be associated with you, Mrs. Bansal, and your webinar on essential study skills conducted in July 2020 was greatly appreciated. We have found a valuable friend in you and thank you for introducing Ms. Sophia Bukhari to us. Mrs. Sophia Bukhari has done her master's in English language and literature from Barkatullah University and has a PG diploma in teaching of English as a foreign language from London, UK. She is at present working as a lecturer in English at Qatar University. With her rich experience of two decades of teaching various TEFL and ESP courses to students, she is indeed a valuable resource. Apart from teaching the four communication skills, Mrs. Bukhari has specialized in teaching academic writing and research writing to undergraduate students. In addition to her teaching assignments, Mrs. Bukhari has conducted numerous workshops for school teachers in Doha, with the reach out program offered by the Ministry of Education. In association with Alif Academy and ACES, she has been training teachers in India to adopt international practices in language teaching. 
Madam, I take pleasure in welcoming you once again and look forward to inviting you to our campus in the future. I once again take pleasure in welcoming all the participants. Thank you. Hearty thanks, ma'am. It is time to begin our most awaited international workshop on essentials of academic writing. I invite our eminent speaker, Ms. Sophia Bukhari, to take over this session. Over to you, ma'am. Asalaamu Alaikum, everyone. Um, hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're all right. All right. Um, my name is Sophia Bukhari, as uh, Sister Fatma just introduced me to you. Uh, thank you so much for having me uh, on board this beautiful morning. Uh, well, it's morning here. Uh, it may be afternoon for you girls and uh, maybe evening for Sister Athia. So a very uh, a big thank you first for uh, inviting me and a big thank you to ACES uh, for having me on board. Uh, we're talking about uh, a lot of things here. We're going to talk about a lot of things here. Uh, I hope the chat the chat box is working because if I ask a question, I would ask all the participants or whoever wants to reply can put their answers in the chat box. And if somebody could please keep an eye on the chat box if they have any questions. Uh, I can take questions while I am talking. You can stop me. I have no problem with that. Or you can keep the questions for the later part of the program. So you will get about 10 minutes to ask me questions. Uh, today, now, can, uh, Sherlyn, can I, uh, can I share my screen? Yes, ma'am, you can. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Okay, so let's begin uh, first things first. What are we talking about today? Now, don't think that this is a lesson where you are, uh, uh, you are just learning some things that you don't know. Uh, let's begin with an idea that we know a lot of things. We don't know everything, but we know a lot of things. But with the changing times, we need to uh, adapt to the new, new um, styles that are coming up. Uh, I'll give you uh, half a minute to quickly read this, what Alvin Topper uh, said. Take half a minute to read this. I'm sure you would agree that today everyone is literate. Um, literate in the sense they can read and write or just read or understand. But today, what we need is, we need to learn, not just to learn, but also to unlearn and relearn. And this is what today's session is about. So I am not uh, going with the premise that, oh, you don't know anything or you know everything. There's no such extremes, especially uh, in, in learning in a learning environment, there's no such extremes. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to see what we already know and unlearn a few things and relearn a few things so that we are very much in times in the 21st century. Uh, this, uh, sometimes we feel that, okay, I don't know what to learn or what to relearn or what to unlearn. Now, some things this uh, uh, I, I came across is unlearn the designs you use, methodology, technology, approach to your work, communication of your values, um, how you deliver your values to others. Our parents delivered their values to us in a very different method. How are we delivering it to the new generation? It has to be different. It has to be more communicative. It has to be more interactive. And we have to set an example first. We were not allowed to ask questions to our parents, whereas today's children ask us questions. So 
make sure that you are thinking about these things. I'm not asking you to make decisions. I just want you to be thinking about it, that where I know all this, but where am I making a mistake when I communicate? So some skills we already know, some knowledge we already know, but is it relevant to today's times? So we're going to try and unlearn a few things, relearn a few things, and ponder over a few things, whether we are doing it right or not. And I think pandemic has helped us in, uh, in giving us time to think of what we actually, uh, whether we are actually on the right track or not, or we got too involved in our lives. So I would prefer you to think about it as we move on with this webinar. Today, what we're going to do is very um, straightforward. We're going to talk about academic writing. Now, academic writing, we all know how to write. We all know how to write paragraphs. But with the changing times, with the influence of different uh, segments of education that we have now, uh, it is important that we, we relearn a few skills and we put, we put more uh, uh, we put more stress on writing itself. So writing as a powerful means of communication. We're going to talk a little bit about formal, informal, and different styles of writing. Then as a teacher, what I have noticed, uh, the drawbacks, the pitfalls that students have, you may have them, you may not have them. But it's always good to see a, a global perspective on the mistakes that people make while writing. And of course, the major part would ta be taken up by what exactly is academic writing? How are we going to build it up? And a bit on plagiarism, which I'm sure you know what it is. If not, we will deal with it when the time comes. And moreover, some conclusions that we, have, we will be drawing from this webinar. So this is what we're going to do today in the next hour, 45 or 50 minutes. All right, so what is academic writing? Academic writing is a skill that you need to learn to convey your ideas, share your thoughts and engage in scholarly conversations. You would say, well, I know what it is, but there are a little bit of nitty gritties that we need to keep in mind while we, uh, while we, are, uh, while we are developing the skills and why we are practicing these skills. So you can see that in that little uh, box up there, what has to be reasonable, uh, one has to be rational, logical, and most importantly, organized. Organization is super important when it comes to academic writing because the reader has no idea what your thoughts are. So if they're not organized, the reader cannot understand what you're saying. So reasonable, rational, logical, organized. Systematic. So it's one, two, three, all right? Three, one, two, if you do it, it's confusing for the reader. So academic writing focuses on this. Now, what does academic writing look like? Now, it looks nothing different, yet it is different from what we all write, all right? I'm going to show you a paragraph, which is an example of academic writing. Now here, I don't want you to go just by the look of it. I want you to observe anything that you find specific in this paragraph. And can you put it in the chat box? What exactly do you find different in this paragraph? Leave the topic leave the, uh, the what it contains. What is different in this paragraph that you see? <clears throat> you have half a minute to put in uh, some comments in the chat. Nothing. Let me check the chat. Cognitive approach. Yes, Sister Abhida. Yes. What else? Do you see numbers? 
what do these numbers mean? I want you to quickly read it, not exactly um, read it to every word, but just generally skim through it. Credits are given. Very good, Mariam. Very good. Transitions. Okay, so you've got another one. Uh, yes. Transitions. We've got credits are given. Precise. Anupama. Excellent. Yes, it's precise. So what we are trying to do here is to look at a paragraph that is an example of academic writing paragraph. And these are the things that we notice even without understanding the whole thing. Documentation, well-researched and organized. So see, you are getting all those pointers as we talked about academic writing essentials. All right. So when we look at these, we are giving, let me just uh, talk one minute about what do I mean by these numbers? 2015 is the number, is a year uh, this person has written about this topic, right? Uh, here it is Butler et al. Et al means all the others. That means there are more than one uh, author for this. And it is 2016. And if you notice, somebody said about transitions. Here you can see this indicates that so whatever the person has read has responded in his own words what he his take on that reading is. So this indicates. So transitions help us to look at academic writing uh, in a clearer way and to understand it better. All right. So this was this is what we are aiming for. However, it will not be possible for us to do everything that is given in this in this 50 minutes, but we will try as much as possible to look at the basic essentials uh, that are required in academic writing. So in academic writing, uh, what we need is the audience. Now I'm going to use uh, 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 an analogy uh, constantly in this webinar is organizing a party at home. We all organize parties at home. What happens there? We need to know the audience, who's coming home for the party. What kind of people are coming home? Will they like something like musical disco party? Would they write something, a sober party? What kind of a party are we organized? Same thing goes with academic writing. So you need to have, you need to know your audience, who's going to read it. You need to know what kind of language you're gonna put in there. Content. Now, content is so important. Um, if I compare it uh, with, with a movie, if the content, if the storyline is not great, you don't like a movie. But when it comes to writing, we say, oh, it's okay. It's okay, I can manage. Why? Content is content and content has to be good in order for the reader to hold his attention while reading it. Perspective is where, what direction you are taking your writing to. Whether your thoughts are on this side or on that side. You need to be very clear when you are writing it. And the most important is the aim. So if you're organizing a party at home, you need to have a name. Is it a birthday party? It's a wedding anniversary party, graduation party. Um, what kind of a party is this? So you need to have an aim in your mind, especially before you start writing anything. So aim, audience, tone, content are few things that are essentially required in academic writing. Most of the time, your audience, you don't know your audience. For example, if you're writing something for me, you don't know me. So you have to assume that this is a, a lecturer from a university. She would, ex she, she would expect this from you. So sometimes we make assumptions, keeping the, the reader in mind. Sometimes we know about it. So you have to make these adjustments before you actually begin to write. Okay, so we have steps. I'm just gonna talk about two steps and that'll encapsulate everything that we 
we are going to talk about. Uh, we need to have a plan. Like I said, for a party, you need to have a plan. Who's invited? What food are you going to serve? What go games are you going to uh, let the children play? Uh, what kind of uh, uh, decorations do you need? All this is required for a, for a party, for writing as well. You need to remember that you need to have thoughts, ideas. Uh, when do you want to write? How do you want to write? What topic are you going to write about? What aspect of the topic are you going to talk about? Let me just elaborate in a sentence aspect of a topic. Suppose we're talking about globalization. So am I talking about just the causes? Am I talking about solutions? Am I talking about causes of globalization? Am I talking about effects of globalization? So which part of the aspect of my topic am I talking about here, right? So that's another important tip that you need to remember before you venture out to write something. Now the writing process is pretty, um, it's, uh, I call it linear as well as circular, both, depending on your experience in writing. Anything that you want to write, you of course do a pre-writing or you go on with the brainstorming. Then you go on into the planning stage, drafting, reflection, Anything that you write or do or present, it's always a good idea to, it's always a good idea to plan it before, mull over it a little bit so that you get more ideas. And sometimes you find that, oh, uh, this is unnecessary. This is too much. I can cut this short. I can elaborate this better. So these kind of ideas will only come when you, when you spend some time on it. So reflect on it. If possible, ask a peer or a friend to review your work. Like I normally ask my sisters to, to, to peer review for me, which helps. Um, or if you have nobody to peer review, leave it start the next day and then you can try and peer review. You can review it yourself with fresh eyes. Revision, revision, revision is super important. That helps you to get a, a, a writing very crisp. When I say crisp, it doesn't have anything uh, extra, anything unwanted in it. And of course, if you feel that it is not up to the mark, you can always go back to additional research or generating ideas. Anything that you write has to go through this circle. And when you finish it, you go to editing and proofreading. And that makes the process complete. If you try to avoid any of these steps, it reflects on your writing. It happens to me in the classroom. It happens with me to me when I am peer reviewing my peers' work. It just shows how much of thought, how much of revision has gone into the piece of writing. So writing is a process. We have to undertake that process in order to make it complete and clear to the reader. If it is not clear to the reader, there's no point doing it. Second thing is you need to know the characteristics of academic writing. Now, why did I put this picture? This picture looks pretty complicated. So writing is a complicated process, but with proper process, you can make it as smooth as this picture looks. If you get onto a roller coaster, it may look pretty intimidating, but when you're on the ride, it takes you smoothly everywhere it has to go. So writing is similar to that, where it is overwhelming at times, intimidating at times, yet, yet it can be managed with proper skills and essentials of academic writing. So what are the characteristics of academic writing? 
so that our journey to writing is as smooth as going into a train in this maze, right? We are going to talk about a few things which are super important. Now, you can either have a, a screenshot taken of this, or I don't know how it works, but the organizers can provide you uh, with this PowerPoint. I have no idea. We'll figure it out after the presentation. So you need to be organized. Task achievement, the writing must be relevant to the, to, to the title. If I'm using uh, solutions to global warming, then all I need to put in is solutions. I cannot put in causes there. So I have to be targeting my aim. What is my aim? My aim is to put in solutions of globalization. Accuracy is another <coughs> important part. Accuracy does, doesn't come only with the matter or the content that you're putting in. It also comes with a range of uh, word choices that you have, grammar, correct grammar, punctuation. You know, punctuation can change the whole meaning. So all these things matter a lot. Hence, accuracy is another important aspect. Normally, I tell my students to use a, a thesaurus or, a, or, a, or find more synonyms for the keywords that you have so that you can use them and not repeat them. So accuracy is another important aspect. Avoid repetition. Don't repeat the same word. Don't repeat the same sentence structure. Anything that I begin with, I like going out. I like to watch movies. I like, it's a repetition, it's boring. Just imagine if you're watching a movie and things are repeated constantly. How, how pathetic it feels. Hence the same thing, the same emotions the reader has when you write something which is repeated again and again. Coherence and cohesion are linking words. These are signposting, what we call them as signposting. Now signposting here makes the reader more conscious of your writing. Firstly, the first solution to the problem of globalization is to plant more trees. The second solution to, cur to, to, uh, to curtail environment deple depletion is to have stricter laws uh, all over the world. So see, it gives you an indication. If I'm adding something, I would say, furthermore, in addition, I'm using the word, word linker words like, for example, that helps the writer make it clear to the reader. And that's what is required in writing. Because in writing, you have no facial expressions, you have no body language to make you understand, to make the person understand what he's trying to say. So coherence becomes super important, right? Next one is referencing. Now, if I am taking uh, important information from other writings and I'm using it in my own writing, I need to give, uh, I need to give reference to where I got it from. I will be dealing with this when I come to plagiarism issues as well. So I don't want to spend too much of time on this. You must have noticed a lot of people have hesitation fillers when they are talking, for example, uh, uh, they keep saying that because their thoughts are not clear in their mind. Uh, we have a word yani in Arabic. Yani is like how we use it in Hindi. They have it in Arabic as well. So if they want to say, yani teacher, I want to find out yani, uh, how to write academic writing. These are not acceptable in academic writing. You have to be crystal clear with your ideas. Hence, it requires time. That means characteristics of academic writing would require you to put in more time, put in more effort, and put in more thought and research before you actually begin to write something. 
And plagiarism is the last one that I'm talking about here, which we will deal with it in, in the latter part of the webinar. So plagiarism and academic uh, integrity is super important. We can't use other people's ideas as our own, but there are some things that we can. So we'll figure that out when the time comes. Let's move on. <clears throat> so this was the background that I was giving you about academic writing. Why is it important? How to achieve it? The process that you can undertake. And uh, it is doable. That's the most important part. It's not something which is impossible. It is doable. And most of us indulge in this and we do it the way it is required. The drawbacks, now this is an interesting part. I have taken these ideas from my classroom uh, experience and classroom experience of teaching other teachers and other institutions. Mostly I find in academic writing, a uh, lack of cohesion. Now when I'm teaching IELTS students, I tell them that you need to have cohesion because the examiner of your IELTS paper doesn't know you. It's just a number that he's correcting. So you have to make sure that you're giving clear, clear instructions and clear indications for the reader to understand. There are few relevant ideas. What happens is we try to uh, write more and instead of, and we think, that writing more is better. For me, writing less is better as long as it is to the point and it is relevant. Repetition of ideas doesn't get you good marks or a good reputation as a writer. Repetition of ideas only makes it boring to write. A repetition of vocabulary, sentence structure. Just imagine you're watching a movie and that repeats everything. The heroine is wearing the same dress throughout. Would you like it? She's talking about the same thing throughout. Would you like it? Same applies to our writing. Uh, variety in sentence structure. Here, today, I'm not going to touch anything about sentence structure because it's a whole new world which needs to be uh, investigated and understood. But variety in sentence structure is super important. Uh, we just can't have simple sentences all the time or just compound sentences all the time. We need to have a variety for the, for the viewer, for the reader to, have to, to go on with, with reading. Sometimes I've also noticed a lack of formatting, unnecessary use of capital letters and punctuation marks. I think we feel that if we have question mark, two, three, four, it makes it more it emphasizes your, uh, your question. It doesn't. It doesn't. Using unnecessary punctuation marks or capital letters is not required. Use capital letter where it is required. In fact, in the academic world, if you type an email with all cap log, it is considered as root. So we have to be very careful when we type or write, whether it has to be in capital letters or not. Formatting is super important. It should, you should package it well. Uh, just imagine uh, a movie that doesn't get advertised enough. You don't get to see it. You don't hear about it. You don't get to see it. Same way, if you package it well, the cover of a book is super important. Yet we are asked to say, don't uh, judge a book by its cover, but cover is important. If it's if it, if it's uh, if it's a uh, bad cover, you don't get attracted to it. So formatting and presentation skills are super important in writing as well. Word limit is another important. Now today, my time is forty five to fifty minutes of my presentation. If I go on to one and a half hours. It's not right because my audiences have something planned out for themselves after 50 minutes. So I cannot be taking over time, their time. 
Hence, in writing, following word limit is super important. If 10% here and there is acceptable, if I'm asking you to write a paper of 800 words and you have 850 is acceptable, but not 800, from 800 to 1800. No, I'm, I don't want that. And what I want is content to be super clear to the readers, right? So these are the drawbacks that I see and how do I fix these? That's an important issue. So we're going to look at some of the essentials of academic writing. Now, I'm, you may find me going back and forth because I'm trying to connect all the dots of academic writing, right? So essentials and the keywords in academic writing is planning. Now, I've already explained what is planning. Referencing, I have already explained when you take somebody else's ideas, make sure that you give them credit. Critical thinking is number two here. Now, critical thinking is important. I'll give you an example. If you're watching a movie uh, that is like Cinderella's story, it is just exactly like the Cinderella story. You say, but I know this story. Why should I watch this movie? You need to bring in a new element of that story into the movie so that the viewers can enjoy it. And then you would say, oh, wow, that movie is good. When you say that a movie is good, you have different ideas that has come up in your mind while watching the movie. And that makes it a good movie. Like when we watched, uh, uh, which one was that? Uh, Amir Khan's Three Idiots or um, Munna Bhai MBBS. Apart from being funny, they made you think. They did make you think. They did give you a lesson. And that made it so popular. Well-supported points. You may say that uh, solution, one of the solutions to globalization is to plant more trees. How do we do that? That's an important one. So critical thinking will come in. Uh, we just can't say government should do this. No, we need to begin at our level. We make sure that we have more greenery in our own houses. We have more greenery in our garden, in our society, in our city, then in our state, and then the government. So we have so many steps that we need to take in order to find a solution for globalization. So well-supported points, if you have them, you are developing critical thinking. And critical thinking actually begins with our everyday life. I'm having a party at home. Why am I having a party? What is my aim? And that gives me critical thinking, right? Logical development of ideas is also important because if I say five, three, two, one, it is not logical. You need to have logical development of ideas. Just, just like a movie where you start with introduction, then you have the whole story, and then you find a climax. Similarly, in writing, you need to have that. And of course, grammar. Grammar is like in a movie, you have a lot, the story has many faults. And then you say, but how is that possible? And that makes, that, that is relevant to writing in terms of grammar. So if your grammar is good, if your sentence structure is good, it makes the reading more pleasurable, right? So when we start to write anything for our uh, personal or professional use, we need to have certain steps. The steps are pretty straightforward. Here I have put the same uh, diagram here because either you can have it as a circle or you can have it as a line. It's up to you and your skill development. You need to choose a topic which is super important and super difficult. It's very easy for me to say, choose a topic. Okay, this you're giving them a, a 360 area and they don't know where to start. 
So we need to put our blinkers on and say, what kind of topic are we looking for? Are we looking for causes, topic with causes, topic with comparison of two things, a process kind of a topic, how to make a cup of tea, what kind of a topic? So choosing a topic is essential, which needs some thought, some time. Of course, then we have to brainstorm for ideas <coughs> about the topic. Brainstorm here would mean whatever comes to your mind, you put it on a piece of paper. I do that for everything, even to have what to have for uh, dinner when friends come in, I have brainstorming session with myself. And that helps me to see what exactly am I required to do for this dinner. Same thing for the topic that you've chosen, make sure that you've done enough brainstorm. Brainstorming doesn't mean you start researching. First step is that you put all the ideas that you have in your mind in the on the piece of paper. Then you find out what you don't know about this topic. And that's where your research begins. So first you need to find out what you don't know about the topic and then start the research uh, step. Once you have research, once you have a lot of material on the paper, you start to plan an outline. So what is going to be my first one, second one, third one? Similarly, in a party, when I plan, I say, on Wednesday, I'm going to do this. On Thursday, I'm going to do this. And on Friday is my party. So I need to plan an outline for my writing as well. Once you have the planning done, you start with writing the first draft. Take time, write it in one go and leave it. If you have a friend who can peer review it, go ahead. If not, read it yourself the very next day with fresh eyes. Once you've done that, check for plagiarism, which is, have you incorporated any idea from the internet or from the book that you have it there? If yes, give credit. If not, you're safe, move on. Edit your work. And then you can submit the work. So these are steps that are required, not just for, for our personal daily personal life, but also in professional life and in academic life. So this is something which I encourage uh, everyone to undertake. Now, when I'm coming to the next slide, it is... The next slide deals with paragraphs. Now, why did I choose paragraphs? Because any kind of writing requires you to write a paragraph. It can be multiple paragraphs. It can be one paragraph. So paragraph is what makes you your writing complete. Hence, we are going to move on to talk about what is a paragraph. A paragraph um, is a group of sentences about one idea and they are laid out in an order for the reader to understand. Now, when I say one idea, I mean, if we're talking about solutions to global warming, the paragraph is only about solutions to global warming. If I want to have three paragraphs, then I would say first solution in first paragraph, second solution in second paragraph, third solution in third paragraph, which makes it three paragraphs. If I want one paragraph, I'm going to put all the three ideas in, the, in that one paragraph. So a paragraph is not just a group of sentences. It has to be about one topic. So if I'm talking about uh, planting more trees in that paragraph, I will give all the information about planting more trees in that paragraph. If I'm talking about having stricter laws as solution to global to global uh, globalization, uh, I will uh, I will make sure. Sorry, I'm talking about global warming, not globalization. So global warming. Then I would talk about uh, putting stricter laws in that paragraph, and not about growing more trees, right? 
So these are the few things that you've got to plan. This is all in the planning stage. But when you are writing it in paragraph, make sure that you are sticking to your one idea per paragraph. So here it contains support. All, this, all the, the sentences in the paragraph should support your main idea. And it should be organized. So you have linkers or connectors to make it more coherent. The first idea, the second idea, the third idea. And that makes it more readable. Maintain your writing's objective. Objective is to give solutions. Hence, we are giving in solutions there. Inform and entertain your reader. You should write it in such a way that you're not only informing, but also entertaining your reader. Entertainment for us doesn't mean, uh, you know, having a fun, having a funny chat of something funny to put in. Entertain also means you're giving them new ideas, you're giving them a new way to look at the same old things, or you are trying uh, to put in critical thinking, your own idea, your own perspective on that topic. That's entertaining. So when we have paragraphs, um, <clears throat> each paragraph <clears throat> should be about one topic, one idea, one aspect, and it should be uh, not a huge paragraph. Sometimes I see students writing two pages and one that's one paragraph. No, that's not the purpose. It needs to express your main idea of the in the paragraph. It doesn't matter how many uh, how many sentences you're writing. And of course, as little as one sentence is not a paragraph, or two sentences is not a paragraph, or having hundred sentences is not a paragraph. We have to learn to have an equilibrium, uh, a balance in our writing. Uh, I want to show you how to create that balance. That balance can be created uh, by using uh, these burgers that we eat every day. You can begin with a topic sentence. A topic sentence tells you what the paragraph is about. So a topic sentence has uh, three things. Number one is the topic, which is global warming. Number two is the aspect, which is solutions. And then what exactly, I, uh, what are you talking about, which is the controlling idea. So if I have to start my paragraph about solutions to global warming, I would say uh, there are many solutions to control global warming. Now, in that paragraph, I'm going to give solutions in support one, support two, support three, and then I'm going to put in a <clears throat> concluding sentence. So concluding sentence will actually reflect topic sentence. It is not something new that you're writing. I will show you an, an example in a few seconds, but this is a proper way of writing a paragraph. And this uh, we need to train ourselves and a younger generation to write paragraphs like this so that they are coherent, they have unity, and they have tone, the correct tone. Uh, I'm going to just show you uh, the four things that need uh, in a paragraph, which is unity, order, logical order, coherence, which is when you're putting in more... Uh, <clears throat> more linker words, more transitions, so that the writer is able to understand. And of course, it is complete. That means it is a good paragraph, right? Let me give you, uh, let me show you what a paragraph would look like. A paragraph would look like this, where you have the topic sentence. But don't worry about the content of this paragraph right now. What we are worried about is whether it is coherent whether it does its purpose or not. So corporate social responsibility can generate a positive reputation for a company, leading to possibly more sales and growth. Topic is corporate social responsibility and positive reputation, how to generate a positive re reputation for this company, 
that makes it my topic sentence. Look at the last line, the red one. Overall, the evidence seems to suggest that investing in CSR can improve brand image and productivity. Same thing in the topic sentence resonates in the concluding sentence. That makes the paragraph very well written. You have examples here as well. So, and you have people saying something, Watson 2018, we have Jones et al 2019, which means you have taken these, these pieces of information from somewhere and you've incorporated it into your writing. So writing, uh, I'm just going back to my slide, has to be in this format. That's academic writing. Paragraphs, you can write various types of paragraphs. Uh, you can write various types of paragraphs, narrative, descriptive, depends on your topic. If you're talking about a process of uh, say, how to make a cup of tea, it's a process paragraph. So you will use similar kind of a topic sentence. You will have some uh, co cohesive devices as per the process like firstly, secondly, next, then. If you're talking about compare and contrast, you would use those kind of words or linkers for your paragraph. Okay. Uh, we have different types of paragraphs. Like here, I'm giving you types of paragraphs, right? So it's a narrative paragraph or a descriptive paragraph. Now I'm going to talk about <clears throat> in a writing, in an academic writing, you need to have three different paragraphs in order to make your point clear. So you have an introductory paragraph, you have one or more body paragraphs, and you have a concluding paragraph. This is exactly what a movie does when you watch it. They introduce the, the, the characters, they introduce uh, the setting, the tone, the, the environment, uh, all the details in the beginning. That's the introduction. Then the story moves on. That's the body paragraphs. And then a climax, which is the conclusion. So this is an important part in academic writing. I'm giving you a brief uh, general overview. I'm keeping a tab on the time. I have about 20 minutes more. So in introduction, what do we put? Normally I've seen students saying, it's very easy for a teacher to say, write an introduction. Now, when you sit down to write and you take a piece of paper and a pen and you say, okay, I'm going to write about, I'm going to write about how to make a cup of tea. Ah, oh, what do I write? So the first thing is that you need to get it started. And that happens when you have no ideas in your mind. So what you do is you start with an introduction. In introduction, you can talk about a hook, a grabber, a, a, a piece of information that will make your reader interested in your topic. Give some background information, background information about your dog. If it is as simple as how to make a cup of tea, Give background about tea, why people drink tea, why, do you, why tea is so popular. Uh, what happens uh, when people don't drink tea? So that kind of background information goes in the introduction. And then we have a thesis statement. Thesis statement I'm going to deal with in detail in a few minutes. So thesis statement is actually the heart of the essay where it says there are three steps involved in preparing a good cup of tea. Then you come to the body paragraph. That's, that's my introduction. Then we come to the body paragraph where I am putting in the process. So you get all the ingredients out. You have to have tea bags or loose tea, must have sugar, must have boiling water, must have milk, or, and you pour it according to your choice. You can even add some uh, mint if you're making uh, cream tea. So these kind of things will go into the body. And the conclusion is you restate what you have said 
so that it finds out that it is concluded. Similarly, in a movie towards the climax, you find all the characters come together and they finish the movie. If it doesn't happen, you say, oh, I didn't understand the ending. Oh, the ending was weird. That's what happens when you don't follow the rules of academic writing, uh, not only just in writing, but even in a movie. So uh, like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the thesis statement at this point. What is a thesis statement? Thesis statement is uh, thesis statement is the heart of your writing. It's like heart for our human body, the same way it is heart for the writing. It gives you the main idea about your writing. Suppose we, I say, what do you think Titanic was? What kind of a movie was Titanic? In a sentence, you can say it's about a ship that went on a maiden voyage and meets with an accident and the whole story revolves around it. That's like a gist, which is the heart of that movie. Same way, a thesis statement is the heart of your writing. And where do you put it? You put it in the introduction so that when the reader reads it, he or she understands what's coming in the body paragraphs. We're going to talk about what comes, what a writer requires to write a proper thesis statement. A proper thesis statement needs five things, three things. I'll, I'll say why not five, three things. We need to have the topic, which is global warming. We need to have uh, aspect, which is solutions. And then we have to have at least one, two, or three ideas that you're going to put in there. So say, for example, if I'm talking about global warming, I would say the three important solutions to combat global warming can be planting more trees, uh, implementing stricter environmental laws, and and making people more aware of this phenomenon. These are the three solutions. So in my first paragraph, body paragraph, I would be writing about uh, planting more trees. The second body paragraph, I would be writing about how we need to implement, uh, how we need to implement stricter laws. And in the third one, I would be talking about create, how I can create more awareness, more awareness about it. So when you are, have these points, you put them in a sentence for the reader to understand what the whole writing is about is a thesis statement. Because it guides the reader, it helps the reader to find out what's first, what's next, and what's the last one. If that guidance is not there, the reading is boring. The reading is confusing. So in order to make your reader clear about what you're saying, make sure that you have a proper thesis statement. If you don't have it, that means somewhere you're lacking in your paragraph. Okay, let me give you an example of this. Can you see here several uh, ways to deal with the issue of culture of job include, include keeping in touch with your family and friends at home, making new friends, and keeping an open mind about new customs and food. Can somebody tell me, can you type it in the chat box? What is the topic of this thesis statement? Can you put it in the chat box? What is the topic? Yes, yes, Javeria, culture shock, yes. I could see somebody's hands up, but if you unmute, you know, we have a lot of uh, noise then. I would prefer if you could put it in here, yes. Yes, Neeraja, traditions and culture. No, the topic is culture shock. What is the focus of this thesis statement? 
Mariam, absolutely right. Ways of dealing with culture shock. Very good, Mariam. Yes. Yes, Rafia. Rifat. Rifat Zora. Adaptability. Okay. Apita Batul. Adaptability. Can you give me the exact words that are there in this thesis statement? Adaptability is, is there, but it's the third one. What is the first solution given to deal with culture shock? Keeping an open mind is the third one. Yes, Mariam Hamid. <clears throat> what is the first one? Socializing. Keeping in touch with family and friends. There you got it. Yes, in touch. So that will help you to calm down when you're in a new culture. Accepting new culture, solutions to culture shock is the focus. Yes. Uh, making new friends in your new home country. Making new friends. That will help you to understand the culture. And keeping an open mind. So first paragraph deals with keeping in touch with family and friends to overcome this. Second paragraph is about making new friends. Acclimatizing. Uh, yes, that can be another one. But in this thesis statement, we are not talking about acclimatizing. But however, this is one of the, one of the uh, solutions to this problem. Very well, thank you. Power of maintaining relations, yes. Touch with family and making new friends are different in different situations. Absolutely. So we have a thesis statement, which is, uh, which is the heart of an essay. So we need four characteristics. If a sentence has these four characteristics, it is fit to be a thesis statement. What are they? It provides an answer to the research question. Now, research question or a topic. Let's say a topic. If research question is something confusing you, let's call it the topic. So it must answer your topic. What are the major effects of technology? Can affect in many ways by improving visual concentration. That's number one. Enabling multitasking and promoting new skills. So we have to have an answer to the topic that we're talking about. It must be clear. Global warming, human activities, and industrial waste can cause environmental pollution. I'm just giving you different characteristics of these statements. <clears throat> it must be clear. Topic, focus, and supporting points must be there. I'm not saying should be there. I'm saying must be. It cannot be a fact. I cannot say that my thesis statement is the sun rises in the east. No, it's a fact. A thesis statement can be challenged, can be argumentative, can be controversial, and that's a good thesis statement. If I say the most uh, uh, self-confidence, decisiveness, and justice, you can say, well, these are three, but I would like to add more to it. So that makes it a good thesis statement. And the last one, of course, is parallel structure. If you notice, consuming, establishing, exercising. So grammar bit also comes in this when you are talking about proper, uh, proper grammar for thesis statement. So parallel structure also makes a big difference in academic writing. Uh, I have a few minutes left. I'm going to move a little bit ahead with my next slide on plagiarism. Plagiarism is something that we don't take it seriously. I'm not, when I say we, I mean uh, generally everyone. Not everyone, most of us don't take it seriously. You know, when we, are, when we are submitting our work, sometimes we just take picture from the internet and we put it, and we think it's fine. I put it from the internet, so it's okay. We're gonna talk about plagiarism means presenting words, ideas, images, sounds, 
which are not as your own, but you're calling it your own, right? So that is a problem. The word comes from a Latin word meaning kidnapper. Uh, kidnapper because you're kidnapping someone's ideas and putting it as your own. You know, it's a big, major problem. All over the world, students, teachers, educators, they are worried about plagiarism. And in most universities around the globe, there is penalty for plagiarism. You get a zero. In my university, in Qatar University, if it is more than 15%, you get zero. And why we keep 15%? Because certain ideas are common knowledge and that is not considered as plagiarism. So 15%, some courses have 0% tolerance towards plagiarism. Some courses have 15%, depending on the course that you're taking. There are two types of plagiarism. One is intentional, one is unintentional. When we have intentionalism, when you know it is my friend's work and you copy it, you borrow, you, you copy from internet, you copy from books, Unintentional is you have not documented it properly or you have made uh, the, the sentences in such a way that they're very close to original and not paraphrased it well, that it becomes unintentional. So you've got to be aware when you're doing academic writing. The excuses that I've heard so far is, it's okay, I don't get caught, you know, the teacher is expecting too much, my parents want an A+. Plus. So I'm going to do it. No excuses are acceptable in academic writing. You use your own words in order to avoid plagiarism. But when facts or common knowledge is used, you can use it without any uh, hesitation. But you have to be smart enough, uh, careful enough not to use other people's ideas into your life. That's, that's common. what is common knowledge, you can use it. So for example, by, when my students are writing about global warming and they're talking about solutions, the solutions are not something new. You know it, I know it, and everybody knows it. So we don't need to cite it. But if an author has given some kind of statistics somewhere, and if I want to use those statistics in my writing, I need to give credit to that writer. So that's the difference between common knowledge and not common knowledge. So don't ever copy and paste any from any source or change a few words here and there and call it your own is also not a good idea. The three strategies that you can use to, to, in order to avoid uh, plagiarism is quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing. And that can be a whole new webinar that we can indulge in at a later stage. So, if you're, if you're writing, if you're working on some kind of paper right now, currently, uh, you can keep these in mind while writing them. Now here I've got that, that uh, paragraph again, which I had shown it to you in the beginning. And that is by giving, by giving proper topic sentence, by giving proper credit, your academic writing is complete, right? Uh, okay, so this is why I have put the same slide out here again for you to get whenever you started, what your thoughts were, and when we are ending it now, what your thoughts are, so that you can compare within yourselves what you have understood from this, from this webinar. So the conclusion is, well, I'm on time. The conclusion is be ready to learn, unlearn, and relearn. That's the mantra that I promote for everyone, and I follow it myself. Uh, learn, unlearn, and relearn. There is no such thing as, oh, I, this is not the age to learn this, or this is not the age to learn. I don't believe in that. One can very well indulge in unlearning and relearning. Understand the characteristics of academic writing, 
We talked about unity. We talked about tone, audience, aim, and uh, uh, adding critical thinking element to it. We talked about presentations in presenting your academic writing. We talked about formatting. So we briefly touched on a few and talked in elaborate on a few topics. Practice writing proper academic paragraphs, making sure that you use the burger that I showed you, topic sentence, supporting, 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 concluding sentence. If you have an introduction to write, make sure you have book, make sure you have some background information and you're putting in a thesis. Body paragraph has topic sentence and supporting sentences and a conclusion should have restatement of thesis, summary of main points and your opinion, which I had shown it to you in one of the slides. So these are the basics of academic writing. Use the process. So that's another takeaway from this webinar is the process that you need to undertake while indulging in academic writing. And of course, avoid plagiarism. So to end it, I would only say one thing. Practice makes you perfect. There are plenty of websites online that you can uh, practice in, but what you need to do is first understand what you know, then you try and find out what you need to know, and then you start to research and upgrade your skills. Thank you very much. I'm ready for the questions. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was definitely a mind-blowing session. I hope everyone would have thoroughly enjoyed and also acquired knowledge. Uh, I request you to post your doubts and queries regarding the session in the chat box. Academic writing and content writing. Content is part of academic writing. So content is what you actually your ideas are and academic writing is the style that you need to undertake in order to be called academic writing content writing uh, you can have content writing for an advertisement for uh, uh, for a blurb so it is it goes hand in hand thank you so much okay somebody uh, monica wants the powerpoint uh, I would ask the organizers, uh, Sister Fatma, to uh, provide you with the PowerPoint and I can email it to her. Any other question? Creative Fatima, writing. You've got 10 minutes. Please post your question. Yes. Uh, is a creative writing related to academic writing? Uh, I would say yes and no, both. Content of creating creative writing is what comes from your mind. Content of academic writing comes from your mind and from your research, giving proper credit. Whereas creative writing comes from your mind and it is up to you how you want to put it. However, the, the, if, you, if you look at the Venn diagram, you know, it's like this, the Venn diagram. The commonality between creative writing and academic writing is that it must have an introduction it must have body paragraphs and it must have a conclusion. So there is a connection. Uh, they, they are there, some commonalities and some differences. So it's up to you how you want to take the ideas from this webinar into your creative writing. Yes. Where we can use capital letters. Uh, Fatima, I would suggest go on the internet and check out uh, uh, websites that teach you about capital letters. Capital letters are, have specific use. Uh, for example, uh, just a short example would be uh, starting your sentence with a capital letter, writing names with capital letter and so on and so forth. But if you are using cap lock for everything, that is considered as root. So make sure that you use capital letters where they are supposed to be used and not everywhere. Uh, plagiarism, Hepsiba, Hepsiba. Plagiarism is something. Uh, plagiarism is something 
which you have taken from another person without giving credit. Let me give you an example of plagiarism. You know, you have seen movies which are actually uh, taken from another movie in another language. And then you say, oh, but you know, this movie looks like this. There's a Korean movie uh, made on a topic, on a story line, and then the same story is taken over by Bollywood and made into a movie. So that's plagiarism. Music, people have plagiarism in. For academic writing, when you take ideas, specific ideas from other people without giving them the credit. In fact, uh, as far as I remember, I think Sister Atya uh, from ACES would be able to guide you later on that. Uh, we've done a course in, uh, in, in with ACES where we taught how to do this referencing and how to uh, reference properly in APA or MLA style so that you're not accused of plagiarism. So there are courses that I think ACES conducts. No, Monica does, no. Can we use capital letters if we have to intensify the issue? You know, in an informal, uh, in an informal situation, Monica, yes, you could. For example, mother said no to going out. So that no, you can put it in capital letters to make it emphasis. But if you make it a habit, if you make it too often, it loses its importance. So I would suggest use it very, very sparingly. Uh, Maria, uh, I think I just answered that question. Yes, you can put it in bold and capital, but very, very sparingly, not too much. Can we start academic essay with a quote or it should be in the middle of the essay? Very good idea. Very good idea. You can start academic essay with a quote. Make sure that it is used as a hook, okay? A hook is or a grabber, which you put it in the introduction. So a hook or a grabber helps the reader to grab, to, to get interested in what you're writing. So one way of getting uh, a hook is to use a quote. Yes, you can, but not in the middle. In academic writing, we don't try to make it freely. We try to make it crisp. Is it necessary to have a tone in third person always? Again, this, uh, what your requirement is, what your instructions are given by your tutor or by your examiner, that has to be uh, important. But in academic writing, we don't use I. I am going to talk about global warming today. No, it has to be in third person. Because when you're writing I first person, it becomes more narrative, more in, in, informal. How to improve writing skills for higher Asia. Uh, I'll give you one short uh, activity that you can use with higher secondary students. You know what I do with my class, Asia? I give them uh, a topic something that is related to their life. For example, uh, what do you plan to do over the weekend? So in the first five minutes, I provide them with a slip like that. And I say, write down a few lines. Once they write it down I, and write their name, I collect them, okay? And I carry on with my lesson. At the end, I quickly eyeball it to see what they have written and then I use a few to show them where they are making a mistake. So if you give them more practice, that helps them. It's easier said than done for a teacher. Give more practice, give more practice. It's easier said than done. But if you take out five minutes uh, on a longish period that you are using uh, in the classroom, uh, it should help. I also encourage you to use various uh, platforms which are free. For example, Padlet, for example, uh, Actively Learn. These are few platforms which are free and you can uh, guide them on that. Tell them to type it out over there and then you can go back 
edit it, tell them what the problems are. Because it is important for high school students to know their problem and then to find out how to fix it. Uh, okay, Apita, Sister Apita says how to excel in writing skill. You know, the first tip is to practice more. Number two tip is to enhance your grammar and to enhance your sentence structure. That will help you with academic writing. So if you know uh, how to write better sentences, if you know how to have different, how to write differently, same things written differently, it helps in academic writing. Uh, make sure that you have some connectors, some transitions in your mind when you're writing it. Make sure that you follow the, the structure of the writing. Like if it's a paragraph, topic sentence, supporting sentences, concluding sentence, use the burger. Uh, if you're writing an essay, you have to have an introduction, body one, body two, body three, conclusion. If you're writing an article, it has to have an introduction, what you want to write, and then at the end, a conclusion. So these are the few things that you can stress on for yourself or for your students. Technical writing. Actually, academic writing and technical writing uh, can go hand in hand. In technical writing, you can use academic writing, which means you can use the same structure, but technical writing is the content that you're going to put in there. So I would say you can use hand in hand. You can use academic writing with technical writing, report writing, with the essay writing, uh, with, uh, with anything you can use academic writing. So academic writing is a whole, technical writing is one part, report writing is another part. Any other question? How formal my sentences should be in an essay? They should be in third person, number one, and they should be formal. You know, it's like writing an email to your friend and writing an email to your professor. That difference is very evident. You don't say, hey, what's up? Whereas when you write to your professor, you say, dear madam, uh, hope this email finds you in the best of health. You don't write to your friend. So that is the difference between the two. Yes, it does. Uh, Afra, uh, creative writing is something that you have, they're two different genres. So creative writing is one genre. The other one is essay writing. But academic writing can, can be an umbrella under which these two come. So whatever we've done today, can be used in creative writing, can be used in essay writing. Okay, uh, is it necessary to cite the works in APA? Now there are many styles, APA, MLA, uh, Turabian, Chicago, Vancouver, there are many styles. This is important uh, to understand what your institution is telling you. So if you are uh, writing an essay for your class, your teacher should be able to tell you which style that teacher wants you to write in. If you're entering a competition, they will also tell you that please make citations in MLA and you do that accordingly. But if they don't say anything, if they don't want, want you to cite, that means they want you to creatively create ideas and put it in and not copy from you. Dear in letters, a good question. You know, dear is, uh, in olden times when we were young, we used to begin our letter with dear. Uh, I use dear when I know the person or, for example, if I'm writing to you, 
I would say, uh, dear uh, Suvrachala, I would say that. But if I am writing to uh, somebody not known at all, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't. I feel when you're using dear, it becomes more personal. So I would say either hi or hello. In that case, we can use it in formal letters. You can, like I said, if I'm writing to you, Monica, I would say, dear Monica, uh, it was great, it was a pleasure to have you in my webinar today. But if I'm writing to <coughs> somebody, or maybe the opposite gender, I'm not comfortable with, I would not use it. Yeah, I get that. I don't know you, but we are from the same gender, so I would I would not feel uncomfortable putting as dear Monica. Thank you, Aisha. Again, it's my personal take on dear. All right, it's my personal take. Uh, Sheikh Mehnaz, is this a statement important in academic writing? It is the crux of academic writing. You have a thesis statement, you are good to go. And to get to this thesis statement, you need to have clarity of the topic, clarity of brainstorming and research, and an outline. And then you can get to the thesis statement. You can't start by creating a thesis statement. You need to go first choosing a topic, brainstorming, researching, making an outline. Once you have the outline, then your thesis statement will fall in place. And that is super, super, super important. In fact, thesis statement is one thing, uh, like I had said earlier with ACES, uh, we had done a course on thesis statement writing. And we spent about two sessions just explaining how to write a proper thesis statement. Thank you. Can students address their teachers as dear in formal letters? Yes, why not? Yes, I would love it. I, I enjoy it when my, when my students write to me, dear Miss Sophia, and I love it. Thank you. Shall we wrap it up? Yes, I, I'm ready if this audience is. I guess you're done with question and announce session, ma'am. It was yeah. a pleasure and privilege to have you among us today, ma'am. I'm sure the participants would now have excellent and clear notion on the topic. We would strive to uphold our integrity and precision on our academic writings, ma'am. We are all truly grateful and are appreciative of your time and proficiency. Thank you once again, ma'am. Thank you so much, everyone. Today was an amazing one. Everyone got to learn something new and we are excited that we have, we have acquired great knowledge today. I now request our student LND Secretary, Ms. Mahina, of 3rd BA English, to propose the vote of thanks. Appreciation is a wonderful thing. It makes what is excellent in others belong to us as well. On behalf of the staff and students of JBS College for Women and the Department of English, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our resource person for the day, Ms. Sophia Bukhari, Faculty, Department of English, University of Qatar, for taking time of a busy schedule to enlighten our students with her wise words today. Your precious inputs about academic writing and its nuances were very informative to the budding literary geniuses and writers of JBS College for Women. Thank you, ma'am. I thank Mrs. Atiya Bansal, director of ACES, who collaborated and encouraged us. She was kind to connect us to Ms. Sophia Bukhari. We are grateful to her for doing this program pro bono. I would like to thank Dr. Fatima Banu, head of the Department of English, without whom this program would not have been possible. We are also indebted in gratitude to Mrs. Abida, 
associate professor department of english for organizing and willingly taking up the responsibility of preparing the banner invite certificates registration and feedback forms and for offering the zoom platform facility and technical support ms kausa from third ba english and ms samreen from third bsc mathematics the ri secretaries are thanked for their help and technical support I thank Mrs. Anis Fatima Faisal, Assistant Professor, Department of English, for live streaming the program. Thanks and appreciation also go to Ms. Tasneem from First MA English, who recited the prayer, and Ms. Shirlin Henrietta P from Second MA English, the MC for the day. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the audience members who participated in today's workshop and made the program a grand success. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Ms. Nahina. It was a splendid session. I am sure everyone has benefited through it. A heartfelt gratitude to one and all present here. Participants, kindly click on to the link posted in the chat box for certificate. Also, uh, you two participants, please fill in the feedback form and your each certificate will be auto-generated. It will also be sent to your mail. Thank you everyone for your tremendous participation. Thank you.